I'm here with Ian Pavelko, also known as Mad Hungarian. That would be me. All right, nice to meet you. And we were just talking a little bit before we got the camera rolling about obviously range and efficiency. And I did right. some informal testing to get to New York or Boston for my little town of Weathershield, Connecticut, between where I, in the winter I care greatly about range. It means stopping or not and getting off the highway to supercharge. Exactly. Not a big deal for most people, and including me. I charge off of sunbeams the rest of the year, but winter's a challenge. So the weight of tires, we talked a little bit about physics and your huge lineup with tires. You've actually done some scientific track testing that I don't think anyone else in the world has done to my awareness, not even tire makers. Well, when it comes to changing wheels and looking at the effect of the wheels on range, particularly in high-speed, steady-state driving, which is really what most OV, you know, when we're obsessing about range, it's on long trips, right? So it's high-speed, interstate, or, you know, Trans-Canada Highway driving. That's what we really wanted to get down to, is like, what happens when you put a standard open design wheel on the car versus a closed aero design? So our benchmark for this was the base Model 3 18-inch aero wheel, which as you know is a base alloy wheel that's got a big plastic cover that you snap in. So what we did is we wanted a, the most perfect controlled environment we could get real world, and that was Transport Canada's test track, which is PMG Technologies in Quebec. So we rented that facility for the day, and we ran a Model 3 on its OEM wheels naked, then put the aero caps in, and what we saw was a repeatable solid result, a 4.7% increase in range, running at 70 uh, miles an hour, 120 kilometers an hour, and you would see repeatable improvement of that. I mean, that's not insignificant. We're talking, you know, 20 kilometers or about 12, 15 miles of range increase just by having those aero caps in. And then we benchmarked it against our new wheel at the time, which was the EV01 Plus and our fast EV wheel line. And we got a 4.4% increase running nice. caps in and caps out. So basically within margin of error, we were getting the same result as the OE Tesla wheel. And we're the only ones I know still to this day who've done this type of testing real world in a controlled environment like that. So there's no question, you know, you can do that and it's going to get you that range. We're the only aftermarket guys right now I think that have that. And something else that's important to consider is the weight of the wheel. So I mean, not only is our wheel just as efficient aerodynamically, it's actually one and a half pounds lighter than the OEM Tesla wheel. And if you really want to go crazy lightweight, we have wheels in our competition series. As you can see over here on the wall, the FCO4, for instance, these are significantly lighter than the OEM wheels. So if you're going to the track, or if you're doing mostly city driving, this is another great option where you can even get a further increase in range. We've seen, uh, I have, you know, one of our customers, uh, Andre Lawrence from uh, EVolution, did a test with the EVO1s, which were about six pounds lighter on his Nero EV, and he saw a 15% increase in his city driving range, wow. which I found amazing, but I mean, he's got the numbers to back it up. So th these differences are real. We have repeatable data on them showing that you can really boost your range with the right wheel. So unsprung weight and physics around the city, a lot of stop and go. I'm trying to imagine yeah. how you get that kind of number. It's about accelerating that mass around it. Yeah, and I mean, as, as you and I were talking before we went on camera, is uh, it's not intuitive because we think regen masks a lot of that. When we do computer mm -hmm. simulations of how much the mass of the wheel is going to affect EV range and stop stop and go driving, well, EV will, re you know, the regen will recapture, you know, maybe 50, 60, 70 percent of that. But that's in a perfect world where you're letting the car regen completely to a stop. A lot of people don't drive like that, you know, you're having to swerve around traffic, you're using the mechanical brakes probably more often than you think, especially in really heavy stop and go traffic, and your regen at that point is not capturing anything. So you're having to compensate constantly to re-accelerate those heavier wheels. So a lighter weight wheel on an EV still represents a significant advantage, you know, in stop-start driving. Even in uh, highway driving when you're in traffic, anytime you're accelerating and decelerating, you're going to get an advantage with the lighter weight wheel. Okay, in a moment I'm going to show your looping video, which you saw a little bit over your shoulders as I was first filming you, about some of the results you got. But if you could talk a little bit about uh, like acceleration, uh, side, people that actually care or do track day and use a draggy yeah. or something, what do you see there for a difference when you've got a lighter wheel on your... Well, that's the very first test I did. When I got my Performance Model 3 back in 2018, yep. within 24 hours of getting in the car, we took it out and uh, we did a test where we went 0 to 60 with the OEM setup, and we were getting 3.2 seconds consistently in our zero to 60 times using a draggy. And when we switched to the lighter FC04 wheel, you know, we shaved about uh, seven pounds off a corner between the wheel and the tire, and that resulted in a 0.1 improvement in the zero to 60. We got it down to 3.1. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but in a car that's already that fast, that's pretty significant. So just changing the wheels, you know, you can you can chop your zero to 60 time by 
0.1, 0.2 seconds in a lot of cases. Your quarter mile time might even be better. Okay, thank you. And uh, where are these actually made? Are you a part of the design team or what's your role? I'm director of technical services. Okay. So all of the data acquisition on the cars, uh, specs on the cars, we do all the 3D data mapping to make sure everything fits. But I do a lot of consulting with our designers and engineers on you know the functionality of the wheels in terms of how it should fit. The EV wheels, I was heavily implicated in the design, like coming up with the aero shape and whatever and testing it and so on. So I, you know, a lot of aspects of not only the car fitments, but the wheel designs and the compatibility between the two. And we also do a lot of work with OEMs. What a lot of people don't know about our company is we, in Canada, we build all the OEM accessory wheels for Mazda, Kia, Hyundai, Nissan, Infiniti, Genesis. So working with those OEMs, oh, wow. a lot of that data that we bring in gets incorporated into our aftermarket line. So even though it's an aftermarket wheel, what you're buying is OEM quality. I mean, we have the, we have the, the report card to back that up. So it's, okay. uh, it's, from a security standpoint, I think it's nice for people to know that. Part of your signature is some wheels that actually look kind of like aero covers built in, but it's not. Or what am I looking at here? It's a thin so sheet this of metal. is this is our latest. This is the EV06. Now this is for those of you out there who have been following the project in Canada. We built um, a prototype, all 100% Canadian content electric vehicle called the Arrow after the old Avro Arrow. And this was to promote, you know, the capabilities of the automotive industry in Canada in terms of being able to supply and build EV components. That car might, maybe if we're lucky, see one day uh, production. And we were chosen as the wheel uh, designer and um, constructor. So what you're seeing here is the production version of that original prototype wheel. We have one on the other side of the booth there, the original Arrow wheels that went on the show car. And uh, now we've put it into production. So what you're looking at is a base uh, flow-formed alloy five-spoke wheel. Uh, which is very lightweight, very, very strong. And then we put an ABS panel onto it to smooth out the exterior finish. Same kind of idea we did with the original uh, EV01 Plus wheel, but we went for like ultra aerodynamic efficiency. So we're gonna be testing these soon, coming up, benchmarking them against the original EV01 Plus wheel. We're really anxious to see how it does out in the real world. But our simulations show that this is gonna have spectacular efficiency improvement using that two material design so that you can achieve aerodynamics without a weight penalty. Speaking of efficiency, sorry to swing around and interrupt, but this came up on the screen. I yeah. just wanted to capture that. So, in short, okay, I got the two screens I wanted. 4.4%. All right. And uh, a little bit of French in there. All right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and again, you're from? Quebec. There you go. <laughs> that makes sense. Well, thank you so much for your time. As the, per as the nerd is going to be at an EV event coming up in Connecticut, try to explain this stuff to the public about tire compound choice and do you need three snow peaks where do you not want to change your tires and wheels every fall and spring, which is the convenience I had with Cross Climate Plus, but sure. at like a 15% range hit. All a trade-off. Tra and you don't want to like scare people off with a trade-off, but you want to explain it. It helps to shop for tires and don't just let whatever you flat need, tire sidelines yeah. you and just buy whatever they have in stock. You got to think about it because it could really affect your EV ownership experience. Yeah, it's, it's the number one thing we're here to educate the public on is wheel and tire choice on an EV is critical, much yep. more so than it is on an internal combustion vehicle. As long as you're aware of that, you know, you can go out, make informed shopping decisions and get the performance out of the car that you expect. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Ian. It's great to meet My you. My pleasure. Person.